In the dimly lit corners of memory, where nostalgia weaves its intricate tapestry, there exists a whisper of a chilling tale. The year 1979 breathed life into the TV miniseries Salem's Lot. Imagine the thrill of encountering that eerie world for the first time. Your heart racing as darkness crept through the quiet streets of a seemingly peaceful town. Perhaps you still recall the sensation of shivers racing down your spine, the sensation of being simultaneously drawn and repelled by the unfolding mystery. Do you remember the flickering glow of the television, the anticipation that gripped you as each episode pulled you deeper into the macabre narrative? Picture yourself, a spectator to the subtle horrors that unfurled on screen, feeling an uncanny connection to the characters as they confronted the lurking malevolence that plagued their lives. Perhaps it was a single, indelible scene that etched itself into your consciousness. A fleeting glimpse of a spectral figure at a window, a hushed voice echoing through the night, or the relentless dread that settled in your bones. And now, as we venture beyond the realm of memory, let's delve into the intriguing tapestry of facts that surround this unforgettable series. Peer behind the scenes, where untold anecdotes await, shedding light on the creative minds that birthed this masterpiece, the challenges they faced, and the impact that resonates even now. Prepare to unravel the enigma, for the stage is set, the curtain drawn, and the secrets poised to unravel in the following paragraphs, painting a vivid tableau of Salem's lot. So, without further ado, let's unearth these hidden gems, inviting you to relive the spine-tingling magic of a series that forever captured our imagination. 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 Overview, the 1979 TV miniseries Salem's Lot, based on Stephen King's novel, delves into the haunting events that unfold in a small main town. Directed by Tobe Hooper, the show captured the eerie atmosphere and supernatural horror of the source material. Iconic characters like writer Ben Mears, Vampire Barlow, and young Mark Petrie are central to the series, each grappling with the encroaching darkness. Unique style and impact, Salem's Lot uniquely blended slow-burning suspense with spine-chilling horror, masterfully building tension as the town succumbs to vampiric forces. The show's portrayal of a seemingly peaceful community falling under the sway of evil set it apart. The miniseries left an indelible mark on popular culture, influencing subsequent horror works and solidifying vampires' role in modern media. Random facts, the miniseries was well received for its faithful adaptation of King's novel, capturing the author's knack for character-driven horror. James Mason's portrayal of the suave and sinister vampire Barlow remains a standout performance, infusing the character with a captivating aura. The iconic scene of a vampire child floating outside a bedroom window left an indelible impression on viewers. Salem's Lot contributed to Stephen King's rise as a prominent horror author, solidifying his position in the literary world. The show's success spurred further adaptations of King's works for both TV and film, helping to establish his narratives as valuable source material. It's material. It's material. Stephen King's Literary Seeds in Salem's Lot, a main town's haunting tale Stephen King's 1975 horror novel, Salem's Lot, sowed the seeds for motifs that would permeate his later literary landscape. Set in a main small town, it foreshadowed the recurring backdrops of Derry and Castle Rock in his subsequent stories. The novel's expansive cast of characters, a departure from his earlier work Carrie, became a hallmark of King's later creations. Notably, the protagonist Ben Mears, a writer, and Matt Burke, a schoolteacher, hinted at King's own roles. King's literary craftsmanship, encompassing his dual vocations, resonated throughout his career. The 1979 TV miniseries adaptation, despite some merits, drew division. The 112-minute movie version, though favored by Stephen King himself, faced modern disparagement. Yet, it showcased King's approval, underscoring its value in the horror genre. A testament to the series' staying power, these debates underscore its lasting impact. A surprising culmination occurred at the miniseries' end, Zimico, Guatemala. An invented town, it added an enigmatic twist. Notably absent from maps, Zimico underscored the eerie nature of the series' conclusion. Fiction and reality blurred, echoing the supernatural aura that made Salem's Lot iconic. In retrospect, Salem's Lot continues to shape the horror landscape. King's thematic tendencies found fertile ground in this small main town, setting the stage for a chilling legacy that endures. The 1979 TV miniseries, once divisive, now stands as a testament to King's storytelling prowess and the lasting allure of terror on screen. Be, 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 be. 
Salem's Lot, unveiling the dark secrets of a 1979 TV miniseries, the town's name echoes a hidden history, revealed through the lens of a chilling adaptation. The 1979 TV miniseries Salem's Lot, based on Stephen King's novel, delves into a world where darkness thrives. Yet, a curious detail emerges, the title's apostrophe. Originally meant to signify Jerusalem's Lot, the actual name of the haunting town, the series simplifies, calling it Salem's Lot. The apostrophe, a whisper of the past, lost in translation. Director Tobe Hooper unveils the trials behind the scenes, exposing a makeup conundrum. Reggie Nalder's eerie transformation into the haunting figure of Barlow wasn't without its challenges. The makeup, a fragile veneer between reality and the supernatural, demanded constant touch-ups. The camera captured both Nelder's haunting presence and the struggle to keep his appearance intact. The grand finale, Barlow's coffin scene, morphed into a tale of resilience. Hooper's team fought against time, reapplying makeup, ensuring the visual continuity of fear. Divergence dances with approval as King's blessing graces the adaptation. While deviations from the source material abound, the depiction of the chief vampire, Mr. Barlow, stands out. King's endorsement of the creative liberties signals a dynamic exchange between author and adaptation. It's an affirmation that even when shadows cast new shapes, the essence of the tale remains. Salem's lot beckons, a canvas where history and horror intertwine. A town shrouded in secrets, makeup that defied the camera's gaze, and the blessing of an acclaimed author converge in a narrative that still sends shivers down the spine. Unveiling hidden apostrophes and makeup woes, the miniseries Salem's Lot remains a testament to the enigmatic art of adaptation, where the past meets the eerie present. Eerie present. Eerie present. Eerie present. Stephen King's Salem's Lot, unveiling the origins of American vampires in 1979. The small screen was graced with an eerie spectacle that sent shivers down the spines of viewers, the TV miniseries adaptation of Stephen King's Salem's Lot. While the tale of a quiet town under the grip of vampiric terror captivated audiences, the genesis of this chilling narrative was equally captivating. Inspired by the age-old tale of Dracula, King's fascination took a twist when he pondered what would unfold if the undead descended upon American soil, particularly within the confines of a close-knit community. This curiosity sprouted the roots of Salem's Lot. A curious literary experiment, it set out to blend the bloodthirsty lore of vampires with the quintessential American small-town backdrop. Yet, the series' tendrils reach even further. Though Salem's Lot was only King's second written work to reach the public eye, it harbored a connection that extended into his later opuses. The enigmatic character of Father Donald Callahan, a central figure in the narrative, found a new home within the pages of King's sprawling Dark Tower series, a testament to the author's ability to weave his literary universe into intricate tapestries. Notably, the Marston House, a pivotal location in the story, holds its own tale of creation. A sprawling facade, painstakingly built atop a pre-existing hillside dwelling, stood as the ominous edifice that haunted viewers. Astonishingly, this meticulously crafted exterior came with a staggering price tag of $100,000, a sum that, at the time, could have birthed an entire functional home, complete with interiors. As Salem's lot unfurled its vampiric tale, it also unveiled the strands connecting King's narrative worlds and the intricacies behind its haunting visuals, a timeless testament to both the power of the author's imagination and the allure of American horror. So, as the sun sets on the secrets of Salem's Lot, the legacy of its sinister saga continues to cast its shadow in the realm of horror storytelling. 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 Lost trivia gems from the 1979 TV miniseries Salem's Lot in the eerie world of television adaptations of Stephen King's iconic works. The 1979 TV miniseries Salem's Lot stands as a chilling standout. While the tale of vampires descending upon a small town is well known, there are hidden gems of trivia that aficionados would relish discovering. One fascinating tidbit involves the scripting journey of psycho fame writer Robert Block. Originally slated to weave the narrative, Block's involvement could have added an extra layer of psychological terror to the show. However, the duty ultimately fell to another creative mind, perhaps reshaping the way the dark tale unfolded. A candid interview with Reggie Nalder, the actor who portrayed the menacing Kurt Barlow, unveils the cost of authenticity. 
Valder's portrayal required him to endure the discomfort of contact lenses and heavy makeup, a painstaking transformation that tested his endurance. The agonizing adjustment process lends new appreciation for his spine-tingling performance, a reminder that sometimes art demands physical sacrifices. Meanwhile, Stephen King's imaginative casting choices bring another layer of intrigue. It turns out that when King penned the character Ben Mears, he had none other than Ben Gazzara in mind. The connection between the author's vision and the character's eventual portrayal adds depth to the story's development. As Salem's Lot continues to captivate audiences with its spectral tale, these lesser-known insights bring a renewed appreciation for the effort, dedication, and unforeseen twists that shape this macabre masterpiece. The darkness lurking in Salem's Lot holds more secrets than meets the eye. From the unexpected scripting journey to the painful metamorphosis of the actors, the 1979 TV miniseries offers a behind-the-scenes narrative as chilling as the on-screen horror. Green horror. Green horror. As we bid adieu to the haunting world of Salem's Lot, it's as if we're closing an ancient tome, its pages still flickering with the eerie glow of our imagination. This 1979 TV miniseries didn't just captivate our screens, it wove itself into the fabric of our thoughts, forever etching the shadowy streets of Jerusalem's lot into our minds. As you reflect upon the cryptic whispers and spine-tingling scenes, you might find yourself wondering how a story from decades past can continue to stir such potent emotions within you. Perhaps it's the masterful storytelling that sank its teeth into your consciousness, or the characters whose struggles mirrored your own battles with darkness. Or maybe it's that old, unsettling house perched on the hill did you, too, feel its spectral gaze on your nights. Salem's Lot isn't just a tale of terror, it's a mirror that reflects the darkness within us all, a reminder that sometimes the greatest monsters are the ones that dwell within our souls. So, as the final echoes of this chilling saga fade into the night, I invite you to share your thoughts, your memories, and your intimate connection with the lot. What scenes left you breathless? Which characters still whisper in your thoughts? How did this tale become a part of your own narrative? Your reflections are the threads that bind this timeless tale to the present, weaving a collective memory that refuses to be forgotten. Thank you for embarking on this eerie journey with us, for delving into the shadows and emerging with your own stories to tell. Your words will linger like the aftertaste of a haunting melody as we continue to explore the realms of fiction and emotion. And now, as the curtain falls on our contemplative moment, we bid you farewell, for now. Until we meet again to explore the boundless realms of imagination. Stay haunted, stay curious, and keep the echoes of Salem's lot alive within you. Within you.